All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to class today. Uh, we are going to start seated. And um, so please sit in a way that feels really good to you. I'm going to sit up on a block in a variation of hero pose here. Uh, so if you're able to do so, whether you're sitting uh, on two blocks or one block or one block up high, uh, that would be great. And if not, um, it'll still be great. So, so sit in a way that feels good to you um, because I want to just kind of focus on this nice long spine, right? And um, cultivating uh, shoulders toward the back body, the elbows kind of toward the back body um, and, um, and just kind of working this whole area. Um, and happy spring equinox. Uh, as of yesterday, you can see my little sunbeam here, <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's a gorgeous day here in Florida. I uh, wanted to, to start with a um, just a little quote that I read. I get these little emails from uh, story people, and they make calendars and all that, but they often send out a little drawing and a little quote. And this one came in yesterday um, and I thought was really sweet and poignant, um, especially with this gorgeous bright uh, day today. And the quote is, I wake wrapped in thoughts of my own struggle, but how bad can it be when outside my door there is an ocean of light? And when I read that, it made me smile and made me try to keep things in perspective um, as we work through our own daily struggles. Um, and if we can just walk outside or be outside um, and, and witness the light and the blossoms, the blooms that we were talking about, um, maybe it can help us um, balance those struggles or put them in perspective. So with that, uh, again, sit well, make sure you're comfortable. We're gonna be here for a little while. Uh, the shoulders roll back, the back of the head reaches back toward the wall behind you so that we notice that if we just bring the head back into alignment, um, it automatically lifts the chest. And then there's a little bit of tone to the belly and we start to tap into the breath. And just kind of getting a sense of where we're at today, what's happening, where our energy levels are, have we have our bodies tapped into the idea of spring and things awakening? Are we still in winter mode? Good, and as we start to work on our breathing, I want you to take three breaths in, right? So it's like these sips of water as we inhale and then inhale more and then inhale all the way to the top, pausing there and then exhale in three parts, right? Dirga, pranayama, and beginning at your own pace, but let's see if we can start to expand the breath and expand the lungs. So inhaling, one, two, three, pause, and then exhaling, one, two, three, all the way out, good, and inhaling, and exhaling. And at your own pace, three parts, Dirga Pranayama, breathing in. Good, and continuing.
Good, one more round, nice and deep. And then allow the eyes to open and roll out the shoulders. And take the hands nice and wide and open and really be mindful of the head, right? I see a lot that when we when the arms go out, the head tends to roll forward and the chest collapses. So keep the chest up nice and high, reach the arms back and then curl your arms around you, but don't let the head drop or the chin drop. Don't let the chest collapse and inhale. And exhale and round, good, inhale. So when I say round, it's really a stretch of the back muscles. Think about cat and cow without the grounding of the cats, right? So very tempting to drop that chin, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep it level, maybe switch which arm is on top and breathe. And maybe when the arms go back, we stretch them and bend the elbows a little and then in and stretch. Good. Don't overdo. Good. Stretch. And crisscross. Good. Last one. Open and then crisscross and hold and see if your hands can wrap around the sides of your body. The chest lifts up. The head comes back. We find our breath here and then leave the elbows bent. Maybe come to eagle arms if that makes sense for you. Or we're going to stay with hands um, to the sides, but elbows lifted. Good. Breathe. Drop the shoulders. Bring the back of the head toward the back of the room. That's it. Deep breath, everybody. Look at which elbow is on the bottom and then release. Open those arms big and wide and switch the position of your arms. Bring those hands around the shoulders. Pause. And then raise the elbows and maybe take the hands into your version of eagle arms, right? Remember, palms don't have to touch. It can be the backs of the hands. The hands themselves can be uh, separate or the elbows can move away from each other. Lots and lots of options here. Drawing the shoulder blades back just a little bit here and then release, open up big and wide, turn those palms up, reach up, exhale to your heart, interlace and press out. And again, no rounding, no dropping the chin just stretch from the spine to the edges of the shoulder blades and then bring the hands in, palms in and squeeze that same place and then reach out and squeeze in. Good, press out and squeeze in. Let those hands go, shake them out. Good, adjust your seat if you need to, right? If you're starting to get cranky somewhere, inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, one hand down, the other one reaches over, just stretch maybe that hand on the floor, reaches out some more as we stretch through the side body and then press up, lift up, squeeze something between those hands and let the other arm come down. Stretching again, maybe moving the standing hand out a little bit more to give you space. And breathe and push off both arms up. Squeeze something between those shoulder blades and let go and roll it out. Good. We're almost done here in this seated position. So uh, again, if you need to adjust, go ahead. Take the arms to cactus pose. Lift your chest, bring the very back of your head back and twist to one side, don't over twist. And come over to the other side. Now, if you could close your eyes, imagine the move coming directly from your waist, right? Right from the middle space. And each time you cur curl to one side, Imagine the opposite side pulling you back, right? So as you turn to the right, imagine the left side ribs 
pulling you back to the left and then the right side ribs pulling you back to the left or to the right. So just feel that, see if you can tap in, go a little bit slower, a little bit of core work here. Find your breath, couple more. And back to center and release and shake that out. And then everybody go ahead and grab a block and sit on it and bring the legs out if they have been under this whole time. So I'm sitting up on a block at the lowest level and straighten the legs. In fact, have a second block near you just in case we need it. So you're sitting up on the block and if that feels unstable, sit up another block right beside it and make that base a little wider. Bring your hands to the floor and then just point and flex your feet. Yep, but really point and really flex to your ability so that we can work the ankles here. Good, and then flex the, um, the feet and let the feet go out to the sides. The toes go out to the sides. Squeeze the legs just a little bit. Think kind of like a Charlie Chaplin look. And then bring to center, take the feet a little bit wider and bring the big toes toward each other. That is always the harder move for me. My, my legs don't internally rotate a whole bunch. And bring them to center. And then bend one knee. Make sure you're nice and solid on your block. That heel lines up with the center of your glute. It does not have to touch. In fact, it probably shouldn't. Inhale, reach the arms up. Good. So if it is your, I don't think I mirrored here. So if it's your left leg or if it's your right, it's the opposite side arm goes to the outside knee and the other hand comes behind you. As you inhale, lengthen your spine, lift your chest. Draw the head back in space a little bit and then look over that shoulder. So not mirroring here, I am turning to the left. I'm looking over the left shoulder. I'm gonna bring my eyes even further to the left. So I'm gonna really see if I can work the eyes there. Lift up through the spine and feel the same muscles that we were twisting with earlier, assisting with that twist. Leave your back hand where it is. Take your front arm up to the ceiling. Hold on to the twist and then release both arms. They're straight up. Exhale those hands down straight in that leg and bend the other. Good. Nice engagement with the long leg just in case, right? So we engage that. We get that little bit more grounding. Take both arms up. As you twist over to the right, your left elbow goes outside the knee. I'm not pivoting, I'm not pulling, I'm just resting it there. And the top hand or the right hand goes behind. The shoulders open up, my left leg is active. I'm gonna inhale, lift the spine. Inhale some more, lift the chest. Whew. Let the head turn to the right, but then let the eyes go even further and breathe. That's it. Keep lifting through the chest and releasing the tailbone down. Good. Relax those eyes. Release the hand that's on the knee and take it up and feel the twist again. I know we've been doing a lot of twist work. Breathe and both arms up, everything back to center and release straight in both legs. Now, when we're sitting up on a block or anything, we do want to watch for the collapse of the knees down toward the floor. So keep some energy in those legs, okay? So you're going to go back to the first side, bend the knee, and then just take it out to the side. Take your second block and place it underneath your thigh somewhere so that your knee stays stable. Uh huh. And breathe. Inhale, reach up. We're coming down through center, please. Watch your lower back. Take the arms forward, drop them down. One leg's out to the side, one leg is forward. And breathe, everybody. 
and just kind of feel what's happening with the legs. Some of you can lift this left heel off the floor, right? So we're working with this quad a little bit more. Breathe. And then come all the way up, roll the shoulders, lift that leg off your block, push the other heel down and lower it down. Good, let's do two more just like that. Lift it, hold, flex. You're gonna feel that quad work big time and lower. Good, just one more, take it up. Woo. Breathe, breathe, breathe everybody. And then slide it forward and let it come down, bend both knees and just shake those hips out a little bit. Take the block, move it to the other side. So one leg straight, one leg bends, and then goes out to the side. You're going to know where it's going to go for you, right? It doesn't feel good if I go way out here. It's too much strain. So I just take it out maybe more at a 45. Digging the other heel in. The other leg is straight out from your hip. Inhale, reach up. Both feet flex. Exhale, swan dive forward. It's a small swan dive. The sit bones move back. I'm just reaching over that leg. I'm trying not to dive down through the head, through the chin. Shoulders to the side body. Good, breathe. Some of you can lift the heel of that side leg off the floor. So already getting that quad engaged. And take the torso up, roll the shoulders. Flex that foot, push down through the other. See if you can lift that heel. You can take fingertips to the floor and lower back down to your block. Good, inhale, lift, push, breathe, 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 and lower. We got one more here, lift, push down through the other heel. That's gonna help. And lower, Whew. oh, I forgot to bring it back and forward. So bring it back and forward and shake that ba those babies out. Take the feet nice and wide, lift your hips, come on off that block and just sit your block aside for now. We're gonna use them in a little bit. Good, take your legs nice and wide and just a little bit of a windshield wiper here. Soften up what we just did. Deep breath and release that and come on back. We're taking it up to hands and knees, <clears throat> but you're gonna take both of your blocks, lay them down on their lowest level and set them side by side, okay? Um, if you have cork blocks like I'm using today, maybe you put your blanket over that just to soften it up a little bit, but that's up to you. And then come on down so that you're on your forearms and your knees. I've got my hands softly interlaced. Um, they're not doing anything otherwise. And then tone through the belly, lengthen your tailbone, and drop through those arms, your chest, through the arms. You're going to feel your shoulder blades kind of scrunch together. And then push into the forearms to broaden and widen. Good, and drop down and lift up. Good, couple more, drop. So right between the shoulder blades. Again, they were talking, I was watching a, a teacher that I really like, and she was talking about cat and cow and how that can be problematic uh, for people with disc issues and osteoporosis. And she said, you know, we can do it another way because what are we doing in cat and cow? We're stretching. And then we're contracting. Good. So come to a neutral spot. And if your knees allow, your arms are going to stay where they are. You're going to reach the hips back. And then you're going to glide forward past your uh, elbows. And then reach back. Go slow. Feel it. Reach forward and back. Stretching through the armpits and then working with the shoulders, elbows. Good. One more. Stretch it back and reach it forward. Good. And then come back to neutral and circle those hips. Just circle around and circle the other way. 
Breathe, everybody. And come back to neutral. Press one hand into your blocks, the other hand into your blocks. Plant those hands. Let the pinky fingers wrap around uh, the edges of the block. Your um, tips of your other fingers can wrap around the top edge if you want. Circle uh, externally, rotate the shoulders, flip your toes under, lift your knees. And breathe. Good. Watch that your blocks don't slip. Lift up through the hips. Find downward facing dog with your hands on your blocks. If that works, your pinky fingers wrapped around the edges. Your other fingers just kind of hanging out there. Press through the index fingers. And breathe. Inhale to your tippy toes. Lower down to your knees, everybody. Keep your hands where they are. Reach back, reach forward, cast your wrists if it is okay. Reach back, reach forward. Good, one more time. Reach back and reach forward. Come right over those blocks, flip your toes, lift the knees, hold here, squeeze your belly, externally rotate the upper shoulders, Press the forearms toward each other and then press all the way back to downward facing dog. Once you're there, maybe you pedal the feet or shake out the hips. Find your breath and then lower your knees once again to the floor. Release your blocks and set them on either edge of your mat and then step forward with your right foot. Good, nice solid lunge here. The back glute is active. You're starting to feel maybe a stretch along the front of your left thigh. And your hands are soft on your blocks. You could even come to fists here or fingertips, which I like, right, to strengthen uh, those little muscles. <sighs> Breathe. And then very uh, purposefully, Begin to straighten the front leg, flex your foot, and then bend, reach, and lengthen the front body. Exhale, straightening that front leg, and inhaling, bending, and looking up. Good, three more. And find the rhythm here, right, as we stretch both the front hamstring and the back front leg, thigh and psoas. One more right here. And breathe. And then flip your toes under, lift your knee. Make sure your feet are wide enough. Check the front hip, make sure it's pressing back so that the knee and the foot are lining up. You can come higher on your blocks. I don't love the highest setting here, just in case it gets too wobbly. And then the same thing, it's a straightish leg, a flex of the foot, a lowering of the foot, a bend of the knee, a lift of the chest. Here we go, slowly straighten, lift the foot on purpose, plant the foot, bend the knee, lift your chest. Just one more, exhaling. And inhaling, and then lower your left knee, take the right leg back, sit back on those heels just for a second, stretch your front body, and then as if you could pull the blocks back, press through your hand, step forward with your left foot. Good, find your lunge. Simple, simple, right? Easy lunge. Watch the hips, try to keep them even. Your front hip presses back. This uh, leg that's back, the glute is active to keep integrity to the hip. And as you exhale, straighten the front leg, flex the foot. We do five of these. And then bend and be sure you lift your chest. Exhale, reach back. Inhale, bend and lift. Exhale, and inhale, lift the chest. Last one, flex and 
reach that leg and then bend and lift. Flip your toes under, lift the knee, find that sweet little lunge. And then just three of these, first straighten the leg, then flex that front foot, lower the foot, bend the knee, look up. Exhale, straighten, flex. Inhale, bend and lift. Good, last one, here we go. Stretch, 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 easy, easy. And bend. Good. Release. You're going to step forward. You got those blocks there, hopefully, to help the hips shake out a little bit. The knees bend. Your hands come to your knees. And yeah, come on up. Whew, and shake that all out. Grab just one of your blocks. Take it behind you. Right? So I'm holding it wide. I'm trying not to over grip. Uh, the block, but I'm just gently holding on to it. And then I'm going to lift the shoulders, squeeze them back, reach them back, press the hands back. Now here's a key. I'm pressing through the shoulders. I'm not pulling down on the arms and straining these already tight muscles. So I'm pressing back and letting the arms be long. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Keep that, keep the nice lift of your chest and press back. One, two, three. Notice if your head wants to roll forward. Whew. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold that extension. Find your breath. Bring the back of the head back in space as if you could press it into the back wall, press the arms back, squeeze the shoulder blades, release one hand, keep the other, right? I'm using the cork blocks today. They are a little heavier, challenging this a little bit more. Release that, hold that hand back, release the other arm so it kind of looks a little funky like that. Breathe, take that hand back, Woo, bring them both forward. Ay, 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 right? And then take the same block between the legs, nice and high up uh, on the quads. Squeeze the inner thighs toward that block. Feel the hips and glutes get nice and active. Good, inhale, reach those arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's come into a nice chair pose and think again about this pose, right? What are we actually doing in the body? So from the hands here, take the hands behind and interlace. And I should have said this earlier, but if your hands don't interlace well, um, a strap makes a lot more sense right, if it hurts your shoulders to interlace. But again, the shoulders press back between the shoulder blades, squeeze, the arms extend out, but I'm not pulling down. I'm really pressing back more than I am pressing down, still squeezing my block, and then roll the shoulders, maybe sink the hips a little, but then tone the belly, lift the chest, and breathe, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one. Release those hands. Inhale, reach the arms up. Pretend you're holding a block between those hands, still squeezing the block, still working the legs, and stand all the way up, and exhale, and let go. Take that block out, everyone and set the blocks at your highest level at the front of your mat and shake those shoulders out. So come to the front uh, of your mat, inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands go to blocks. Walk your feet back so that you're more or less in a 90 degree position. Your wrists and shoulders sort of lined up, right? Hips and ankles. And then think again about this dropping of the chest with a neutral spine and then pushing into the blocks to lift. 
Exhale, soften down. These are soft, by the way. And inhale, push up. Exhale. Inhale, push. Good, one more time. Exhale. And inhale, push. Lengthen the tailbone, squeeze the belly. Peel your right foot off the mat and extend it out. Breathe. Notice, right? Find the middle of your left foot, everybody. The middle of your left foot as the right foot like presses back. Lower that foot right next to the other hips width apart. Hang in there, tone the belly and lengthen the tailbone, lift the left leg. Find the middle of your right foot. Notice if you curl in or curl out or go to your heel, or go to the ball mound. See if you can find the middle. And then imagine pushing that left foot out, out, out. Lower that foot. Bend both knees. Look up. Take your hands to your knees and stand up. Ooh, and let all that blood come back down where it belongs. Ooh, take everything out, everybody. Right, so we're starting to see that we can move through the spine without really over-rounding. I've, I've been cautious about that over-rounding in cat pose anyway, because I feel like we do too much of that normally. So why not, right? We can stretch the muscle without overly rounding an already rounded spine. So hopefully that makes sense to you. All right, so let's take those black those blocks back down at the second level. Find mountain pose. Think about all the beautiful light outside, that light coming into your body. It is spring, everyone. Take the arms up. Exhale, hands to block. Push into the blocks, lift halfway up, tone the belly. Exhale down. Soften the knees and step back with your right leg. Lower your right knee and exhale as the front leg straightens and then the front leg bends. Good, one more just like that. Straighten, flex your foot and bend. Flip your toes under, hold here, solid lunge everybody. Smack in the middle of your front foot, straight in the front leg, and then bend and look up. Good, last one, straight in the front leg, and then bend the front leg and look up. While we're here, right hand stays down, left arm reaches up, moving the spine in so many directions, finding this gorgeous twist imagining the shoulder blades moving away from each other and exhale hands down Woo. breathe if you can lower your blocks to the lowest level plant your hands step back to plank i know breathe fire up the legs and then downward facing dog everybody and breathe Find your breath, notice your body, your pose. Where do you feel this? Feel the deepening between the shoulder blades without the collapse, right? So kind of tricky there. And then look at your blocks, step forward with your right foot. Bring the blocks back up to the second level and lower your knee. Undo your toes, exhale, straight in the front leg, flex your foot, and then plant the foot as you lift your chest, inhale, exhale, inhale, hold, flip your toes under, lift that knee, squeeze your cute little butt, and straighten your front leg, flex your foot. Drop the foot bend and look up. And one more here, flex. 
reach, feel the elbows train in towards each other, and then drop the foot, find that lunge, leave your left hand where it is, take the right arm up, move collarbone away from collarbone. Uh-huh, and breathe, everybody. Exhale that hand down. Listen up, you're going to step forward. Woo. Breathe, take your blocks to the highest levels. Plant those hands, walk the feet back. Your wrists, your shoulders roughly lined up. Your ankles, your feet roughly lined up. Tone through the belly. See, if I just hang out here, <laughs> I can feel the sway in my back and the overlift of the sit bones up. So I want to lengthen the sacrum, lengthen the tailbone down, let that be heavier so that I have a little bit more tone to the lower back. And then bend the elbows, push into the hands to lift up. Bend the elbows. Inhale, straighten. One more here, bend. Push to straighten. When you're ready, we're peeling the right leg and lifting that straight back, finding the center line of the front foot. One, you're here, optional. Two, you're gonna bring that knee in for three. So squeeze it into the elbow and straighten. Bring it in and straighten. Good, last one, bring it in and straighten. Lower that leg down to the floor. When you're ready, switching sides, lift the left heel. Extend out through the left leg. Find the center line of your right foot. And then optionally, three elbows in and out. Good. Squeeze it in. Out. Ooh, good. Last one. Squeeze. And out. Lower that leg. Bend your knees. Bring your hands to your knees and look up. And then stand up. Oh. And find your breath. That's it. Take a deep breath, everybody. I'm just going to take a sip of my tea. <clears throat> Set your blocks aside for now and grab your strap. I should have cued this at the beginning of class and I forgot. You're going to need a loop in your strap. That loop is going to go around your thigh and the buckle is going to go toward the back. So let's start with, I think I'll um, face this direction if the sun doesn't whoo, blind me too much. Um, and take the strap around your left foot, walk it all the way to the very top of your thigh. Sorry, that sun is in the worst spot. And then tighten it so that it would stay there on its own, not super tight, okay? You should be able to put some fingers under there. You're not cutting off the blood supply. And the buckle is not sitting at the hip, bone hip joint, it's behind that. It's right where that flesh of the uh, glute is starting. So once you're there, your left foot is forward, Let's see, how am I going to do this? I'm going to face forward because it's just going to be the easiest way to demo, I think. So you're facing forward. The strap is your front leg. We're going to go to warrior two. But here's how we're going to do it. You're going to take that strap, reach your opposite hand behind and grab it and just give it a little pull. And when you pull, you'll notice when I pull back, the hips are going to turn to the front side, right? So that's what I'm looking for. Turn the hips and then turn the front foot to point forward. Bend the front knee. I've got this back strap. In fact, let me turn it back around. So I've got the back strap resting kind of like my hand or my knuckles are resting on the opposite glute. And once you get that, I want you to pull on that strap 
And notice that when you pull the hip back, the front knee follows. So line that front knee up with your front foot. Okay, I'm gonna turn around again because some things have to be seen forward. So pull and then anchor that strap. Take your front hand and just drop it on your knee. Look at your front knee pointing over that third toe. The torso is tall. This front hand just floats up right above the knee. It's like you've got a, a line there or a shaft there, and it's just going to line up. Now, here's the interesting part for me. This back hand, take the back collarbone and spread it wide. So I'm going to pull the elbow back, Whew. right? So now the chest is wide. I'm pulling. I'm keeping tension on the strap across the opposite glute. The collarbones are nice and wide. And then let the hand slide out for warrior two. <sighs> collarbones wide, tailbone down, front hip pressing back. Find your breath here, everybody. Front hand floating right above the knee, collarbones wide. And breathe. And then take the front hand reach it behind and just hang on to your strap. Both arms wide, both shoulders wide, or not both arms wide, but both hands back. Good, release the back hand, come back to tight, to grab that strap low, release the front hand. Your other hand goes back to your knee, straighten the front knee. Now, once again, you can play here to see in triangle pose, where's the front hip going? I want the front hip to face the front knee, to face the front foot, right? The strap is wrapping around the glute, and I'm firing up the back glute. Here we go. The back shoulder opens, the front arm floats. Feel it? And then we start to lean forward, and it's just gravity. Just gravity, you're gonna take that hand down where it's gonna go for you. It might be way up here. It might be lower, but as soon as you collapse this part of your body, I think you're too low. Now, back strap pulls that hip back. The front top shoulder opens those collarbones. Find your breath, everybody. Extend the arm up. If you want, holding that strap, finding your breath, triangle pose, breathe, and then pull, 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 come all the way up. Just take this same strap, wrap it all the way around your hip, straighten the legs, feel that, that's just like a little cushion, we just swaddled those hips, hold on to it, and come forward and breathe. That should feel pretty good to most of us. Deep breath. And then turn the toes out, bend the knees, come on up, undo your strap, loosen it up. It probably got a little snug and slide it down your foot. Take it off. Now, I probably did not say this on the other side, but when you put this strap on, the tail end of your strap should be to the outside. And if you didn't do that on the first side, you probably discovered that that was a little bit trickier. So let's feed that strap uh, through the right foot, bring it all the way up to the hip crease, tighten it up so it'll stay on its own and then roll that buckle back so it's on soft flesh and not on your bone. The right foot is forward. In fact, go into uh, a wide, wide leg standing pose is amazing where that sun is right now. Bring in the light. So you've got this strap. It's reaching to the back already. Grab it with your other hand and give it a little Pull and you'll feel the hip start to turn already. Once that hip starts to turn, turn your right foot forward. I'm sorry I'm not mirroring here. 
It's trying to keep it all straight in my little brain. And then bend your front knee. I've got that strap. I'm going to pull it to the opposite glute. And that's going to help me keep this hip, this leg, almost externally rotating. But really, it's just neutral. And then the knee bends. And I find alignment. And I press through the back leg so that it is nice and straight. The hand floats uh, at the knee. And then it, it rises up so that it's just straight up from the knee, maybe a little higher. And then pull the back shoulder back. And notice how that opens your whole chest here in Warrior Two, at the same time that the knee is staying steady, right? It's not floating in, it's staying steady here. So then one, you're here, belly is toned. Two, we float that arm out still holding on to that strap pretty tightly and find warrior two. Good, deep breath, everyone. You got it. Take the front hand, reach it behind, hold that strap snug behind you. The collarbones stretch away from each other. Both arms are now back instead of forward. And then keep that hand behind you there, release, and then re-grab that strap with your back hand nice and close. Extend out through that arm again, straight in the front leg. Draw this shoulder back. Yeah, yeah, you got this, right? You feel the difference immediately when we go to this position instead of this position. <sighs> And then as we tilt the body forward, we just let that hand float down. And we think about that. And if I pull on my strap a little bit more, it actually sticks the femur into the socket. And I press through the back leg and maybe extend the, front, the back arm up and find triangle pose. Breathe. That's it. And pull up, pull up, pull up. Take that strap, wrap it around, not your waist, your hips, nice and snug. Like give it a good pull, turn the toes, and then take those hips forward. I love the strap around the hips. Um, if you have, if your SI joints um, feel unstable on a particular day, you just take your strap and loop it around your hips and give it a good squeeze. You can leave it like that for an hour. It'll just help to hold those hips in place. Deep breath, everybody. Good, and then turn the toes out, bend your knees, come on up and undo your strap and take it off of your leg and release the strap fully. Good, you can leave it in a loop um, or not. In fact, go ahead and keep it in a loop and take it a little bit wider. Um, and bring the strap behind you. Don't hold on to the buckle and make sure the tail end is not gonna uh, trip you up. But take those hands behind you, the palms are face in. And then same thing that we did earlier, lift your shoulders, pull them back, squeeze, and extend out through the arms, not um, pulling down, but pulling together almost, right? And then inhale and pull the shoulders back. Exhale, bend the knees, keep the knees bent, maybe take the arms up, watch your backs. The knees are bent on purpose to support this forward fold. Breathe, pull the shoulders back, everybody. Inhale, pull the shoulders back. Lengthen the front of your chest and then bend the knees more as you lower those hands and lift up to standing again and then release that strap fully. Oh, shake that all out. It's amazing to me um, how much can be done here with just 
like opening up your world through your joints, your shoulders, your hips, all that fun, fun stuff. All right, have your blocks nearby. In fact, you can take them to the front of your mats. We're gonna pull all this together. Inhale, reach the arms up, everyone. Exhale, hands down to your blocks. Maybe walk the feet back just a little bit. And then inhale, lift your torso up, lengthen your tailbone. Exhale, lower back down. <sighs> Bend your knees, step back with your right foot. Adjust your pose so that you're in a really nice looking lunge, right? A nice feeling, I shouldn't say looking, it's feeling lunge. Your left hip presses back. <sighs> When you're ready, exhale, straighten your front leg, flex your foot, find your breath. And then bend your knee, plant your foot, breathe, take your hands past your knee, take it up to a nice high lunge. Exhale, hands down, right hand stays down, left arm reaches up collarbones move away from each other breathe exhale hand down good listen up you're going to turn your back foot to the side position you're going to pretend that strap is there pulling your right hip back right hand to right knee press all the way up warrior two the collarbones move away from each other the hands float Find your breath, take your front hand behind you and release, take that top arm up. Woo, I know, breathe, release, arms out, straighten the front leg, drop that hand down to the leg, triangle pose. Lots of energy today, it is springtime, my darlings. Release, slide up, cartwheel back to your blocks. Turn your back foot, walk your blocks forward, push off, lift up, Woo. breathe, optional, three times, knee to elbow, one, and two, and three, imagine someone pulling that right foot back, lower that heel, Bend both knees, inhale all the way up. Exhale your hands to your heart, soften your shoulders, find your breath. Release those hands, bring the blocks back to your mat. Let's do the other side. And then we're done with this little flow today. Inhale. Smile, everybody. Exhale all the way down to your blocks. Maybe walk the feet back just a little bit. And then inhale, lengthen and lift. Exhale, lower down. Soften the knees and step back with your left leg. Adjust your lunge so that it feels good to you. When you're ready, exhale and straighten the front leg. Flex the foot. Lower the foot, bend the knee. When you're ready, come up to high lunge. Find your breath, everyone. Exhale, lower those hands down to your blocks. The left hand stays down. The right arm reaches up into a twist. Already thinking of those collarbones. Opening up. Exhale down, Whew. breathe everybody. Drop the back foot to the side position. Check your alignment, imagine that strap as they're pulling that hip back. Your right hand to your right knee, reach up. Open up warrior two, this hip rolling back, the back leg fired up. Breathe, soften the shoulders. That's it, find that sweet, sweet space where you can stay. And then the front hand reaches behind you and we lift up, whoo, I know. Big work here, lengthen the tailbone. 
and reach up again. Straighten the front leg, soften the toes. Whoop, find triangle pose. And breathe, collarbones move away from each other. Front hip reaches back into the hip socket. Breathe. You got it, everybody. Take it up, warrior two. Cartwheel those arms forward, straight in the back foot. Walk your blocks forward, push off. Lift that leg. Find your strength here. And exhale as the knee comes to the elbow. And then straighten again, two more. Squeeze it in and straighten. Last one and straighten and then lower that foot to the floor. Breathe, good, listen up. If your knees allow, take your feet wider, bend your knees, hands are still on your blocks and then come to a seat. <sighs> <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> Hopefully you're saying the same thing. Wow, that feel good. <laughs> good. And we're going to come on down to our backs. Please have a block where you can reach it. Don't know about the strap yet, but, um, but keep it and keep it in a loop. Okay, because I think we're going to do one thing at the end with it. If we get to it. All right, feet to the floor, everybody. Dig into your heels. Roll the shoulders back. Take the arms out. Come back a little ways, hold. Lift one leg and lower. Lift the other leg and lower. See if you can lift both feet, both pose. Pull the chest through, keep the shoulders back. Collarbones are wide. Drop one heel, drop the other heel. Come all the way up just for a second. And then keep those knees bent, feet to the floor. Roll all the way down. And release your feet are on the floor. Shoulders are back and down. Find your breath, everybody. And just kind of feel your body here, right? Feel, feel it. Grab one of your blocks and take that block between the knees at the second width, right between the knees if you can, so that you can squeeze in. And ideally, it's even just a slight bit higher then the knees as far as when you put your your feet on the floor, if you ran your hands across the knees, the block, you would feel that block poking up. And then squeeze in so that you feel not just the knees, but part of the shins and the thighs as well. And then draw the shoulders back and, and come into robot arms, right? And I love robot arms because it, it allows me to press the shoulders back, which automatically lifts the chest. And then I'm gonna to tone the belly in, squeeze the block and just lift the hips a little bit, not a full bridge pose, lengthen through the, the sit bones, right? So that as I, I've said multiple times, think about your glute muscles and your hamstring muscles just kind of bringing those tentacles together to strengthen each other. The shoulders press down into the floor, the shins press forward, the block is getting squeezed, and we're finding ourselves in this lovely low bridge pose, lengthening the tailbone, press the back of the arms down to the floors if you could squeeze the shoulder blades again. That's it, you got this. Soften the fingers, by the way, and then you're gonna just tap your hips and lift and squeeze. Good, tap and lift. Three more, tap, lift, tap, and lift one more, tap. 
lift, lengthen your tailbone and give me 10 baby pulses. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, squeeze your block, 2, 1, and lower all the way. Lift your feet off the floor, grab your block, set that block aside, keep it nearby. And breathe. Good, you're gonna take your right hand to the front of your thigh, just above your knee. You're gonna take your left hand to the front of your shin, just below the knee and then push your right knee into your hand and resist. And then push your left leg into your hand going in the opposite direction and hold. So neither leg is moving, but your right leg is trying to pull into your chest and your left leg is trying to pull away from your chest. Good, breathe. Now flatten your back to the floor a little bit. So I wanna a slight tuck of the pelvis. Good, breathe everybody, pulling one leg in, pushing one leg out, bringing the back to the floor, toning the lower belly down to the floor and release everything. Release the back, release the legs and switch. Your right hand goes to the front of your shin, your left hand goes to the top of your thigh. I'm just moving so I can show you. Um, and then I'm gonna push my left leg in. It's always easier if you do one leg at a time. Push the left leg in, but keep it from coming in. Push your right leg away, but keep it from moving. Push and pull both at the same time, and then press your back to the floor. And breathe, don't hold your breath. Don't create a bunch of tension in your shoulders. You actually get a little bit of an arm work here, especially on the left side. Good, breathe everybody. Keep pulling and pressing. Breathe, bring the low back to the floor, squeeze the belly. You got it. And release, bring both feet to the floor. Want you to take your strap, listen up. <laughs> listen up, everybody. Keep it somewhat loose. Feed it through both legs and then bring it up to your hips, not your lower back, your hips, right? Right across the sacrum. Just tighten it a little, but not super tight. And make sure the buckle is in the soft belly and not uh, on the outside of either hip. The strap is always lower than you think it is, okay? So if you were to feel your hip points, my strap is just below my hip points and kind of tight. So just leave it there, grab one of your blocks, lift your hips, take the block under your sacrum, your strap can just hang out there. And then both knees up and both knees high. Good, and come into this very restorative inversion. Um, it is a variation of legs up the wall. It is a lovely way to get an inversion, a very, very uh, much a calming of the nervous system. Um, it, even if you don't have a wall nearby, the legs hover. The sacrum you can play with. You can either be flatter on the sacrum if that feels good to your low back, or you can be to the upper edge of the sacrum as long as you're not dumping into your lower back. Shoulders are down, palms are face up. There is a great big smile on your face because there is light outside and it is spring and it helps us keep our struggles in perspective if we can just walk out into the light. So breathe, feel your chest rise and fall. Let go of your troubles for now, for this moment maybe. 
breathe in the possibilities, the adventure, That's it, everybody. Feel your whole being calm down in this pose. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice your breath. Good, one more. Very slowly, just bend the knees and allow one foot to come to the floor. The other knee comes to chest. And then switch sides. The other foot goes to the floor and the other knee comes in toward chest. Release both feet to the floor. Press up, remove your block, squeeze your hips. And then find your strap and wrap it underneath the glutes, the bottom edge of the glutes where the thigh meets the glute and just give it a good pull. It should be somewhat tight around the hips. Give it another pull around. Take it around one more time, depending on your legs until you're at the end of your strap. <laughs> And then tuck the end of that strap underneath the wrapped strap, anywhere you can find. It doesn't have to be pretty. Keep that and straighten the legs. If it is too tight, just lower the strap down the thigh a little bit. And then straighten the legs for Shavasana. So this is much akin to swaddling, right? Um uh, that we used to do or we do with babies, we are containing the hips so that they feel safe. They feel um, uh, like there's this contiguous, you know, this, this solidity to them. Um, and then hopefully it feels good and you can just let go, let go of the legs, let go of the hips, let go of the belly. If it doesn't feel good, start by undoing the leg portion. If it still doesn't feel good, undo the hips fully, right? So it doesn't work for everybody. But then allow the shoulders to soften down. Allow the body to quiet down. Allow the mind to quiet down. Allow the jaw to soften. Find your breath, everyone.
Just breathe in, breathe out. Don't worry about anything else in this very moment. Let go even more. To wake yourself up from your Shavasana, if you're ready, start to wiggle the toes, bend the knees, everyone, reach the arms overhead. And then just reach down for your strap and undo the big wrap around. You don't even have to take it off the hips if you don't want, but you can loosen it if you want, or take it off while you're still down. And then draw your knees to your chest. Hold one knee in, stretch the other leg, and then switch, draw that knee in, stretch the other leg. Both knees to chest, and then both knees Roll over to one side so that we come into seedling pose. And then from here, pressing all the way up, releasing fully, coming back to a seat. Feeling the light both outside and inside. Inhale, take the arms up, everyone. Exhale right to your heart. Bow to your own inner light. Let that light shine. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Namaste. Thanks so much for coming to class.